Just ahead on CTV News tonight, what to do if your pipes burst. Plus, lawmakers introduce legislation to combat gun violence. And the county animal shelter is finally reopening. We have all those stories and more up next on CTV News. I'm T Taylor Thomas with the CTV News Update. We have been dealing with temperatures below freezing for the last few days, and this is a recipe for disaster for some homeowners. WSSC Water wants residents to know who they should call if your pipes burst. The pipe in your house breaks, your first call should be to a licensed plumber. If a pipe in the street, if you see water running down the street, you want to call WSSC Water. If a pipe in your home breaks, then you want to call a plumber. Everything in your house, on your property, is the responsibility of the homeowner, and WSSC Water maintains the pipes in the street. Well, if you have an electric car, listen up. Experts say EV cars' batteries lose some of their travel range in the cold, especially in sub-zero temperatures. Studies found that the range loss varies from 10 to 36 percent. The batteries also need to heat up before being charged, but experts say that with some planning, owners should be able to move as usual. Telling the car to prepare and warm itself before charging can cut down on wait time. Governor Moore's recently unveiled budget focuses on his core priorities while providing new funding for public safety, child care and employee raises. Moore says he is working with Maryland lawmakers and others to deal with a growing structural deficit without the need for tax increases. He says the proposed budget is working on bringing spending back to pre-pandemic levels. The average state in this country has grown by 7.5% over a five-year period. Maryland has grown by 0.2. And so we continue to have aspirations. We need to have a GDP that can actually meet the aspirations. Uh, and so I think, you know, dealing with, dealing with a, uh, the deficit, it is not just about the things that will not make it inside of a budget. It's not just about cuts. We've got to get this economy going. The budget plan would close a $1 billion projected cash deficit and reduce a projected structural deficit by 34%. A Montgomery County council member is withdrawing a bill that he introduced just last year. According to reports, council member Will Jawando is withdrawing a bill which would have increased the county's tipped minimum wage by $2 every year until it reached the jurisdiction's current minimum wage. The bill would have also required that if tips do not total $15, then the rest of their wage would be covered by their employer. Maryland lawmakers propose taxing gun dealers and manufacturers to fund the state's trauma system. Sponsors of the legislation say the exercise tax would generate an estimated $13 million. The Comprehensive Community Safety Funding Act is modeled after a similar law in California, which goes into effect on July 1st. Maryland's law would require licensed firearm dealers, ammunition vendors, and fire manufacturers to register a certificate with the state. The University of Maryland Police Department is looking for help in identifying a suspect responsible for multiple incidents last year. Take a look at these pictures. This individual is a suspect in a number of cases of malicious destruction of property. The suspect spray-painted campus property at various locations with reports in November, December, and as recent as this month. Anyone with information regarding the incident or the identity of the suspect is asked to contact police at 301-405-6249. You're watching CTV News. I'm Taylor Thomas, back in a moment. If anyone knows the joy of rescuing animals, it's me. Just ask my rescues, who are all very important members of my family. Your life can also be forever changed by adopting a shelter pet. And it's not just about happiness your pet gets from finding a loving home, but that which you'll get from bringing them into your life. The heroes at American Humane have been helping animals for more than 140 years. Whether it's rescuing animals caught in disasters, 
ensuring the safety of animal stars on the screen, or protecting our planet's endangered species. They go above and beyond to further their mission and make the world a kinder place for animals. Please consider adopting a shelter pet and support American Humane. You can learn more at AmericanHumane.org. Thanks for joining us. A federal lawsuit is alleging that white correctional officers are controlling a Hagerstown prison with a race-based gang. A group of five black officers are accusing the gang of discrimination, retaliation, and fraud, as well as creating a hostile work environment. The federal class action lawsuit is being heard in Greenbelt District Court, and the suit names the Maryland Department of Public Safety and Correctional Services, the warden, several employees, and 25 John Does. The suit also alleges the white officers engaged in criminal activity, including witness tampering, wire fraud, and drug smuggling. Ladies, it's time to grab your sneakers and hit the gym. One business owner has developed a fitness space designed specifically for women. CTV's Katera Jones is in Forestville with more. It all started with an idea of creating a safe space for women to work out. Now, Samaya Williams, the owner of Herflex Fitness, says her business has grown in ways she didn't imagine. So bring that leg back more. Good. Now from here, curl it up. Yes. Good. Good. Samaya Williams wears many hats. She's not only the owner of Herflex Fitness in Forestville, but she's also an instructor too. And unlike many other gyms, her business caters to only women. We teach them how to correctly lift weights to reach their goals, um, and they'll learn to find the fun in it. And that's what I think a lot of people really enjoy about this place. Williams first opened doors to her flex fitness back in September of 2020 with only 100 members. But soon her business grew. And two years later, she moved into this bigger space on the 700 block of Marlboro Pike. I had built up the clientele throughout the pandemic. Um, and then a lot of my members who were with me uh, before everything had to close down, they were just affirming me, Maya, you can do this. This is time. You've built up the clientele. You just have to trust God. You have to step out on faith. Her gym focuses on strength and conditioning through group classes. She wants women to know that they don't need to spend hours in the gym to lose weight. There's a lot of women, you know, going onto those cardio machines because they're so nervous. The gyms are crowded. Uh, but when they come here, they learn, okay, I actually like my curves. I just want to get rid of this excess body fat. And they understand that in order for me to keep my curves and get rid of this excess body fat, I need to be challenging myself with weightlifting. I really need to focus on going up in weight each week, improving my form, and then doing my cardio after the fact. Williams says she plans to open a second gym location in Prince George's in February. Katara Jones, CTV News. For more details on upcoming classes at Her Flex Fitness, visit the website right there on your screen. A popular wholesale retailer chain says it's testing out a new way to check in the membership of cardholders. According to reports, Costco has launched a pilot program where it is now scanning membership ID cards before customers enter the store. Reports indicate Costco is implementing the policy change to crack down on non-members using the cards. The pilot program is happening at a number of locations across the country. The Prince George's County Office of the Sheriff held their promotional and award ceremony this week. The event highlighted and honored exemplary men and women who serve Prince George's County every day. Sheriff John Carr saluted and gave out awards to newly promoted captains, sergeants, deputy first class, corporals, and even civilian staff members for putting residents first. Since 2023, 63 law enforcement personnel have been promoted. The ceremony, which was held at Riverdale Baptist Church, was the first in-person promotion ceremony in almost 15 years. Whether you're looking for the transit center or shopping district, the city of Mount Rainier can point you in the right direction. New color-coded signs directing people toward local amenities include the library, art studio, and the police department. Posted on top of four-foot poles, both pedestrians and drivers can now spot them along Route 1. There is currently an effort to expand the wayfinding signs to the Rhode Island Avenue trolley train and other areas along the Route 1 corridor.
The Prince George's County Animal Shelter will reopen to the public this weekend after closing its doors to stop the spread of a dangerous virus affecting dogs. This Saturday will be 10 days since the last diagnosis of strep zoe in one of the shelter dogs. The respiratory virus caused 30 deaths in dogs at the shelter when the outbreak began. The three rooms open to the public this weekend will be completely symptom free from strep zoe. The shelter says if a dog adopted from their facility starts showing symptoms within seven days of the adoption, the dog can be brought back to the shelter for treatment. All right, our sports reporter Simon Bugs is here. And listen, I heard that Flowers High School is doing it. Absolutely, Taylor. The basketball team is absolutely killing it right now. Hey there, everybody. And coming up in sports, the Flowers High School basketball coach Roderick Harrison talks about the players that have stood out so far this season. Don't go anywhere. My name is Janice Hicks, and my son Jacob was hit and killed by a freight train when he was 16 years old in 2012. When the doctor finally came out and started to describe all the things that they tried to do to save him, but they weren't able to. In a split second, a distraction, and he's gone. I'm not sure that I will ever be the same person I was. Jacob was my whole world. Okay, everybody, it's time for your Friday sports page. Flowers High School bas the Flowers High School uh, girls basketball team is absolutely killing it this year, and now they are one of the best teams in the county. The Lady Jaguars have won over half of their games so far this season, and I caught up with the head coach of the team, Roderick Hairston, and talked to him about the players that have really made an impact this year. Kyla Graham is our junior uh, captain that has definitely been playing uh, off the off the rails, along with uh, Alana Joy, who's a returning sophomore. She's been playing very well, also. But uh, a standout freshman, Ava Redmond, has been doing a really bang up job. She's uh, definitely uh, a surprise. So I'm impressed with her play. But most of the freshmen are. are transitioning and uh, locking in pretty fluid with our program. So Simon, I know you are a sports enthusiast, so with what's happening at Flowers High School, how was it being there during this time? Well, Taylor, it was an <laughs> amazing experience. I went to I went to a game a couple weeks back uh, against a um, game against Laurel, and they that, that team is, has talent all over, like the coach said. They absolutely blew out the Lady Spartans. Um, it's clear that this team um, can definitely make a deep run this year, and I'll definitely be rooting for them. I am too. I am too. All right, let's get a quick check on our three-day weather forecast. Tonight, temperatures are going to be bone chilling cold low of 19 get that and tomorrow uh, there's a slight slight chance of light snow tonight but Saturday the chill continues with temperatures reaching onto the higher about around 27 degrees Sunday we have a slight increase with temperatures in the low 30s you might want to bundle up and break out those sunglasses on Monday we will be clear with a high of 40 degrees and that wraps up our CTV news update I am Taylor Thomas and I'm Simon Bugs have a great weekend good night